Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV, and today we're gonna to talk about travel photography in the beautiful Caribbean on the island of St. Lucia. Adorama TV presents Photo on the Go with Joe McNally, where you'll go behind the scenes to see how great photos are made. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV. The reason I go to Adorama, it's a real store with real people, and I've got friends and associates there who have guided me through all my camera purchases for years. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV, and we're gonna talk about travel photography. It's the middle of the summer. You know, they came to me and said, Joe, can you do something about travel? Because a lot of folks are out there with cameras right now in the hot summer months. I said, sure, we're not on location right now, but I thought I'd uh, show a story, a book project that we've been working on intermittently for years, uh, and kind of the entire to detail scope of doing a travel story, and some of the lessons that might come to the fore when you take a look at an array of pictures that hopefully have a beginning, a middle, and an end, even though this project really isn't over. I have no idea when it's going to be over. It's the never-ending story that I'm pursuing down in St. Lucia. Uh, on Chastanay, Jade Mountain, one of the most beautiful places on earth, so when the owners say, hey, can you come down and work again on that project for a while, I generally say yes, because it's a great place to go. In fact, you know, I hope they never finish the book. What's the idea of travel photography? The idea of travel photography is make somebody interested in going there. Okay, get them involved, entice them, okay, seduce them about the beauty that you are seeing in front of your camera, make them go to a place they've never been. So what do you have to do? You have to use certain photographic rules, like a mantra I have in my head all the time of entire to detail, for instance. You have to show the whole place. Right? This is a beautiful scene. It shows the hotel. This is on Chastanay, Jade Mountain, down in St. Lucia. Okay, beautifully nestled in the green. There's a monument, basically, or a national landmark for St. Lucia, the Piton Mountains in the background. You know, you got a sailboat out in here. That sailboat, by the way, is on a radio remote. It's a software program. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, entire to detail. Now, of course, you can look at me and say, dude, I don't have a helicopter. I know that, okay? I don't have a helicopter too often either. The folks at this hotel can afford one every once in a while, so they put me up in one every once in a while. But you can get a sense of scale on the ground too. I feel like oftentimes my whole career as a photographer, I've been looking for some place with scale, with overview, a window, a roof, all that sort of stuff. So here, there's a good sense of scale. Human beings, okay, give you a sense of how, how big the place is. The graphics of the bridges bring you in. That's a nice thing. Then you, you can use the same scene and make it different just by drawing up some, someone up into the frame and making them big, making them friendly color, good light, different quality of light than the other picture. It, it's inviting, okay? You're drawing someone in, okay? Scale, that was upfront scale, this is far away scale. Not classic light, right? It's kind of splashy and mottled, it's not full and broad, but it has a mystery to it. The shadows give some depth and dimension. Then of course you take your subjects, your couple, whoever it is, put them in a splash of light. Symbolic pictures you can make. Details, okay, this is hot stone and the hands. Drill through something, entire to detail, sense of scale, move the reader along, okay? You don't necessarily need to show the massage if you show this, perhaps, because this is symbolic of the massage. Okay, depth of field, very powerful tool. The hands on the frets of this uh, violin here down in the cafe. I don't need to necessarily show the whole musician. Just the evocative nature of music by dropping a crucial piece of the focus on the hands, letting everything else go into texture. Same thing here with the food, okay? Limited depth of field, critical focus here and then the background goes out of focus. To do this, I found redemption again, okay, in the fact that prime lenses are back on the block, right? They had kind of gone away for a while, you know, in many people's experience because zooms are so important. But fast wide glass, or just fast glass, really, really crucial in terms of showing depth of field or lack thereof. This is a 24 millimeter f1.4. It's become one of my favorite lenses because it has the width that you need, but then when you get in close, you can also limit your depth of field even though you're shooting a wide angle lens. So uh, prime glass, there's all sorts of solutions out there for prime glass, but if you are going after prime glass, staying away from zooms, look at the speed of the lens. By that, I mean the f-stops. How fast is it, 2.8, 2? 2? 1.4, wow, that's pretty cool. Be aware too that every f-stop you go open <laughs> towards 1.4, it's kind of ka-ching, right? The lens gets a bit more expensive. Alrighty, now, 
foreground stuff, okay? You gotta pull things into the foreground and you gotta make someone you know, jump into your photograph. I don't think this is all that successful. Why? Because someone is looking at this photograph has got to get through all this sort of boring water here, which is not particularly colorful, to get to my couple, which is in the middle ground, not the foreground. Tried to fix it here by pulling them up. Now, they, the boats have a little bit of distortion. That's okay, right? They kind of loom at the camera. My camera's down at the water's edge and I'm filling my foreground and making people interested, drawing them into the foreground. Drama, if you get to that place when you're a travel photographer, I bring flash with me, okay? So I threw some flashes up in here in this room, isolated this couple with dramatic light and made them small relative to the beautiful silhouette kind of dusk landscape out here. Very powerful thing to do. If you notice too, the flashes are gelled very warm, very inviting. Warm colors draw people in, okay? If you meet personalities, try to match the light with the, uh, with the personality, okay? This is, you know, just one of my favorite people down there. She's a beautiful singer, Claudette, and I always light her in a very peaceful way, all right? Because that is her persona, wonderful musician, okay? And then closing, some sort of detail or something that evokes kind of relaxation and and the sense of wanting to be there. Something like this worked out really well. It's become a very popular picture with the resort owners. They use it all the time. So entire to detail, scale, f-stops that lead to either lots of depth of field or no depth of field. All those are tools you can use to tell a story of the entire place and then also go through that entire place right down to the details. Make somebody want to be there. Joe McNally for Adorama TV talking about travel photography. In the hot months of summer, everybody's going places with their cameras. So hopefully this has been helpful. Go out there and make some wonderful travel pictures and some great memories. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.